Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to On Cash Flow, where I help you become a master of your own cash flow. Now let's get started. We're gonna take a look at my first full year of financial independence, my first full year of early retirement. And this takes place over the course of August of 2021, when I first became barista five until August of 2022. So one full year, and during that time, I went from turning age 27 to now turning age 28. So let's look back and see what this first year has been like. And just a quick note to keep in mind during this time also I had no mortgage bill so I had a paid off house so that made it a lot easier and when I did declare my financial independence my net worth including the value of the home was around seven hundred and forty thousand dollars we're gonna talk about how that changed throughout this entire year what really happened during my first full year of financial independence well I can say a lot happened that's for darn sure <laughs> first off when it comes to my part-time work my barista file work which is this YouTube channel I published well over 100 videos on this channel so so there was a lot of work that was being done, not only physically creating the videos themselves, but the research that went into it, the learning that went into just YouTube in general, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of time was actually spent developing these YouTube videos. But don't worry, there was also lots of fun to be had in this one year of early retirement. I went to many different places. So here's the list that I have. I live in Tennessee and I went to many places in Tennessee. I've been to Kentucky once. I've been back to California to visit family and five times this year. I've been to Nevada twice. I went to Arizona once, Utah once. I spent an entire month in Mexico. I've been to Virginia five times. I took a road trip with a rented RV across the entire country from Arizona all the way to Virginia. And currently right now, as I make this video, I am in Hawaii. That's why you'll notice that this background is not my usual background and I'll be here for a few months. What else big happened during this full year? Well, I invested in my first rental property. I literally bought a property, had it rehabbed, so got a lot of work done to it. And I rented it out. So that was quite the endeavor. So now I'm officially invested in real estate. And then to fill in all that other extra time that I had, it was filled doing all kinds of cool stuff like hiking and camping and all that kind of stuff. Anything that I like doing. So yes, it has been quite an eventful first year of financial independence. But the reason why I'm actually making this video is because I saw another video from another channel that's similar to mine. And that channel is called Two Sides of Five. But I'll talk more about that at the end of this video. Next, what I want to share with you is what a typical day in the life of me being, you know, barista five, what it looks like. So this is a typical day, meaning I don't have anything special planned, like I'm not traveling or I'm not going out, doing something fun, which does happen a lot. But this is more of a typical day, like what's gonna happen, like a usual boring, regular day. I usually wake up anywhere between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. And then after waking up, I'll usually start doing YouTube related work. And that can last anywhere from two to four hours, depending on what's going on that day. And then after working for two to four hours, I'll go ahead and head to the gym usually and work out there for an hour to an hour and a half. And after that, I like to go on a walk for another hour to hour and a half. And during that time, I'll be listening to my podcasts and listening to my audiobooks and such. After getting back home for that in the afternoon, that's when I'll usually take care of any kind of things that need to be taken care of, any kind of chores that need to be done around the house, any kind of miscellaneous tasks that I've made for myself, all that kind of stuff. And then by the time the early evening rolls around, that's when I usually just hang out, watch a lot of YouTube. I should probably slow down on the amount of YouTube that I watch, but watch some YouTube, watch some TV, uh, watch some movies, play some board games, any kind of stuff like that, you know, just hanging out during the early evening and then around 10 o'clock maybe even up till midnight uh, that's the time I usually go to bed and wake up and do it all over again so that would be a really typical day you know kind of a boring day where nothing else is happening because not every day can be filled with excitement because that will actually get old very very fast you got to have those boring routine days and you got to have some exciting days as well oh and I forgot to mention there that another part of my typical day that's super important is hitting the like button on my videos <laughs> If you're enjoying this video so far, please make sure you like it, give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out and I would really appreciate that. But let's get on to some numbers here. Okay, so in my first full year of financial independence, I have experienced some pretty crazy market volatility and I've also been experiencing some pretty crazy inflation, right? We all have. That definitely affects someone who is, you know, retired or semi-retired, whatever you want to call it. But here's some of the crazy stuff that I've actually had to witness here. So my net worth, which I'm investing 100% in stocks in a very simple two fund portfolio, I saw it peak in January of 20. 2022 at around $780,000. And then in that same year, just six short months later, I saw my net worth dip down, like crash down to a very lower amount of $660,000 in June of 2022. On paper, I lost about $120,000 in six months. And yes, that did hurt, but I was pretty confident that something like that was going to happen at one point or another, because I just believed that it was going up way too fast when I saw that in January of 2022, being close to $700,000. $80,000 compared to when I did declare my financial independence, it was around 
$40,000. Even at that time, I thought it was pretty high. But of course, I never timed the market. I never tried to think about, hey, when is this gonna happen so that I can make some kind of strategy? Nope, I just kind of let it be. When I was experiencing those market downturns, what I actually just did was I simply reduced the amount that I withdrew from my portfolio, a pretty relatively small amount, so that I would withdraw less from my assets during those temporary downturns. And I'm still very confident in my plan because of a concept known as re-retirement. So re-retirement is basically where you recalculate your financial independence plan. You can do this like pretty much every year and say, hey, am I still on track? If I withdraw this amount, starting with this amount value, whatever I am at right now today, am I still on track to have a high success rate, historically speaking? If that's true, then you're still good. If not, you can make some small adjustments if you're flexible in your budget or if you're flexible in how much money that you can earn. If you are able to adjust, then you're gonna be in a much better position, pretty much no matter what the market volatility is. Now, real quick, I wanna know from you in the comments below, what do you think that your first full year of financial independence is going to look like? And if you're already retired or if you're already financially independent, can you recall what your first full year was like? Please let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to know. But there is one more thing I definitely wanna share with you, and that is what I would do differently or what I'm going to be doing differently for this next year that's coming up. Well, first off, I think the most important thing for me, and it might be for you to take away as well, is that I think that I wanna keep things simpler for this next year than it was last year. So I began making my withdrawals, for example, on a weekly basis. You know, take your withdrawal rate divided by 52, and that's the percentage I would withdraw every week approximately. I made it simpler mid-year by changing it to withdrawing only once per month, but now I think I actually wanna keep things even simpler than that next year by withdrawing only once per year. This might not technically be optimal, but you can bet that it is a lot simpler. It's a lot simpler to calculate, it's a lot simpler to follow, and that's what really is drawing me towards it to do this next year. I think that following the percentage of portfolio withdrawal might be better for me because it's a lot simpler than following the constant dollar withdrawal that adjusts for inflation. So whatever my portfolio happens to be when I make my annual withdrawal, I want to take a percentage of that value rather than my starting value and then adjusting that for inflation while also keeping a minimum withdrawal. Basically, I think it's a lot simpler to take a percentage of your portfolio, whatever it happens to be when you make that withdrawal, rather than what your portfolio was when you first started taking withdrawals and then trying to figure out what inflation was and adjusting for that. And because I'm so flexible with my budget, I think that I can make that happen. It would definitely make me feel a lot better as well. Lastly, another thing I do want to continue doing is I want to continue diversifying into rental real estate. I want to do that in order to diversify my income, in order to diversify my investments, but also I want to do it in order to keep things interesting in my life and have a little bit of work to do. Just because you're financially independent, just because you're retired early, it doesn't mean that you never have to work again or you never can work again. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. That's the whole point, right? And like I said before, I made this video because I was inspired by another video made by Two Sides of Five. So they have a video where they recount their first year of financial independence and what their daily schedule is like. So I'd highly recommend that you check out their video. I'm gonna post it in the comment below. I'm gonna post it in the description below and it's gonna pop up on the screen right after I get off the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Zach from oncashflow.com and I hope to see you next time.